Welcome back to part three of our AZ-900 preparation series. Let's continue the journey to certification success. Question 16. A company is planning on setting up a solution in Azure. The solution would have the following key requirement. Provide an analytic service for BI and machine learning needs. Which of the following would be best suited for this requirement? This question is all about identifying the right Azure service for analytics work. The company needs something that can handle two specific things. BI, business intelligence, think reports, dashboards, and data analysis, and machine learning capabilities. They want one service that can do both heavy-duty data analytics and AI ML workloads. Look for the service that's specifically built for these demanding analytical tasks. The options are A, Azure Content Delivery Network, B, Azure Synapse, C, Azure Load Balancer, D, Azure Cosmos DB. Let me help you think about this with a real-world scenario. Imagine you're a retail company with tons of sales data, customer information, and website activity. You want to create business reports to understand your sales trends, that's the BI part, and you want to use machine learning to predict which customers might buy certain products, that's the ML part. You need a service that can crunch massive amounts of data, run complex queries, and also train AI models. Think about which of these services sounds like it's built for heavy analytical work, versus basic infrastructure tasks? The correct answer is Azure Synapse. Absolutely correct. Azure Synapse is Microsoft's powerhouse analytics service, and it's specifically designed for exactly what this company needs. Here's why Azure Synapse is perfect. It combines data warehousing, big data analytics, and machine learning all in one integrated platform. Think of it as your complete analytics workshop. You can store massive amounts of data, run complex BI queries to create dashboards and reports, and build machine learning models, all within the same service. It's like having a Swiss Army knife for data analytics. Let me explain why the other options don't fit. Azure Content Delivery Network is for speeding up website content delivery worldwide. Nothing to do with analytics. Azure Load Balancer distributes network traffic across multiple servers. It's for performance, not analytics. Azure Cosmos DB is a great database for storing data, but it's not an analytics service. You'd still need something else to do the BI and ML work. Remember this key point. When you see analytics, BI, and machine learning in the same requirement, Azure Synapse should immediately come to mind. It's Microsoft's flagship service for serious data analysis work. Question 17. Your company has multiple subscriptions in Azure, and the administrators want to transfer billing ownership of the subscriptions between your company's accounts. Does your administrator need to contact Microsoft for this activity? Great question. This is testing your knowledge about Azure billing management capabilities. The company wants to transfer billing ownership, basically changing who gets charged for the Azure subscriptions from one company account to another. The key question is whether this is something administrators can do themselves through the Azure portal, or if they need to open a support ticket and wait for Microsoft to handle it manually. The options are A, yes, B, no. Think of this like transferring a phone bill from one person to another in your family. Some companies make you call customer service and go through a lengthy process with representatives. But modern, user-friendly services often let you handle these transfers yourself through their website or app. Azure is designed to give administrators self-service capabilities for common tasks. The question is really asking, is billing ownership transfer something so complex that Microsoft has to do it for you? Or is it something they've made simple enough for you to do yourself? The correct answer is no. Exactly right. Azure provides self-service billing management capabilities, and transferring billing ownership is something administrators can do themselves without contacting Microsoft support. Here's why this makes sense. Azure is built for enterprise customers who need flexibility and control over their billing arrangements. You can transfer billing ownership through the Azure Account Center or Azure Portal using the built-in transfer features. It's actually a pretty common business need. Companies restructure, departments get reorganized, or subsidiaries change. So Microsoft made this process streamlined and self-service. The process typically involves the current account owner initiating a transfer request and the receiving account accepting it. No phone calls, 
no support tickets, no waiting for Microsoft representatives. Why yes would be incorrect. Microsoft doesn't require support contact for standard billing operations like ownership transfers. They've automated these common administrative tasks to save everyone time and make Azure more user-friendly for busy administrators. This reflects Azure's philosophy of empowering customers with self-service capabilities for routine management tasks. Question 18. Which statement accurately describes the modern lifecycle policy for Azure services? This question is testing your knowledge of Microsoft's modern lifecycle policy. Basically, their promise about how long they'll support Azure services and how they handle service retirements. It's asking about the specific commitments Microsoft makes to customers regarding advance notice, support duration, RAT, and what happens when services are discontinued. Pay attention to the specific timeframes and guarantees mentioned in each option. The options are A. Microsoft provides mainstream support for a service for five years. B. Microsoft provides a minimum of 12 months notice before ending support for a service. C. After a service is made generally available, Microsoft provides support for the service for a minimum of four years. D. When a service is retired, you can purchase extended support for the service for up to five years. Think of this like a lease agreement for an apartment. When you rent, you want to know, if the landlord decides to stop renting this place, how much advance notice will they give me to find somewhere else? The modern lifecycle policy is Microsoft's way of saying, here's what we promise you about advance warning if we ever need to discontinue a service. This gives businesses time to plan migrations, when find alternatives, or adjust their strategies. The key is understanding what specific commitment Microsoft makes regarding notification periods. The correct answer is B. Microsoft provides a minimum of 12 months notice before ending support for a service. Perfect. This is the core promise of Microsoft's modern lifecycle policy. The 12-month minimum notice period is Microsoft's commitment to give customers adequate time to plan and migrate when a service is being retired. Here's why this makes business sense. Companies build their infrastructure around Azure services, so they need reasonable time to transition if something gets discontinued. 12 months gives organizations time to evaluate alternatives, plan migrations, train staff, and execute transitions without panic or rush decisions. Why the other options are incorrect. Option A, five years mainstream support. This refers to Microsoft's fixed lifecycle policy, not the modern lifecycle policy. Option C, minimum four years support after GA. The modern lifecycle policy doesn't guarantee a specific minimum support duration, only the advance notice period. Option D, extended support purchase. This also relates to the fixed lifecycle policy where you can buy extended support. Modern lifecycle services don't usually offer this option. Remember the key difference. Modern lifecycle policy equals Microsoft commits to giving 12 months notice before retirement. Fixed lifecycle policy equals Microsoft sets specific support timelines like five years mainstream plus optional extended support. Question 19. Which Azure resource can be configured to use Apache Hadoop? This is a straightforward question about Azure's big data services. Apache Hadoop is a popular open source framework for processing and storing large data sets across clusters of computers. The question is asking which Azure service is specifically designed to work with Hadoop and its ecosystem of tools like Spark, Hive, and HBase. Think about which Azure service is built for big data processing. The options are A, HD Insight, B, VNet, C, Azure SQL Data Warehouse, D, Azure SQL Database. Let me paint a picture for you. Imagine you have terabytes of customer data that you want to analyze, maybe sales records, website clicks, and social media mentions. Regular databases would struggle with this volume. Apache Hadoop is like having a team of workers who can split up this huge job and work on different pieces simultaneously across multiple computers. Now, which Azure service would be designed to host and manage this kind of distributed big data processing? Think about which option sounds like it's built for heavy-duty data analytics rather than basic infrastructure or traditional databases. The correct answer is HD Insight. Absolutely right. Azure HD Insight is Microsoft's fully managed cloud service that's specifically designed to run Apache Hadoop and other big data frameworks like Apache Spark, Hive, and Kafka.
HD Onsite is basically Hadoop as a service. Microsoft handles all the infrastructure setup, cluster management, and scaling while you focus on analyzing your data. It's perfect when you need to process massive data sets that traditional databases can't handle efficiently. Let me explain why the other options don't work. VNet, virtual network, is just networking infrastructure. It creates isolated network environments, but doesn't run any specific applications. Azure SQL Data Warehouse, now called Azure Synapse Analytics, is Microsoft's own data warehousing solution, not Hadoop-based. Azure SQL Database is a traditional relational database service, completely different from Hadoop's distributed file system approach. Think of it this way. If you need Hadoop in Azure, HD Insight is your go-to service. It's literally named after Hadoop Insight and was built specifically for this purpose. Question 20. You have configured an Azure storage account with Azure Data Lake. How can you view storage account files? This question is asking about the graphical tool you can use to browse and view files stored in Azure Data Lake storage. When you have files uploaded to Azure Data Lake, you need a way to actually see them, navigate through folders, and manage your data. The question is specifically asking about viewing files, not command line operations. So think about which option provides a visual, user-friendly interface. The options are A, Data Explorer, B, Windows Explorer, C, AZ Data Lake Show, D, Get Data Lake Files. Think of this like organizing photos on your computer. You have thousands of photos stored in Azure Data Lake, maybe customer data files, logs, or analytics data. You want to browse through them, see what's in different folders, maybe preview some files, and organize them. Would you rather use a nice graphical interface where you can click and browse? Or would you want to type complex commands every time you need to see what's stored? The Data Explorer here refers to Azure Storage Explorer, Microsoft's official GUI tool that works just like Windows File Explorer, but for cloud storage. The correct answer is Data Explorer. Perfect. When the question mentions Data Explorer, it's referring to Azure Storage Explorer, Microsoft's free standalone app that provides a graphical interface for managing Azure storage accounts and data lake storage. Azure Storage Explorer lets you connect to your storage account and browse through all your files and folders just like you would on your local computer. You can view, upload, download, and organize files with simple point-and-click operations. It's specifically designed to work with Azure Data Lake Storage and gives you that familiar file browser experience. Let me explain why the other options don't work for viewing files. Windows Explorer is your local computer's file browser. It can't directly connect to Azure Data Lake Storage in the cloud. AZ Data Lake Show is an Azure CLI command that shows information about the Data Lake account itself, but doesn't let you browse and view individual files. Get Data Lake Files appears to be a PowerShell command, but the question asks how to view files, not run commands. Remember, Azure Storage Explorer, Data Explorer, is your go-to GUI tool whenever you need to visually browse and manage files in any Azure storage service, including Data Lake Storage.